Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Although the end Permian mass extinction, also known as the Great Dying, was the most severe extinction event in the history of life on Earth, it was not the only such event to take place over the course of the period. Indeed, during the Middle Permian, between 260 and 259 million years ago, another far less famous extinction event occurred that had a profound impact on both terrestrial and marine faunal groups across Pangaea. Known as the Capitanian mass extinction, this cataclysm was caused by a variety of different factors, including intense volcanism stemming from the Emation traps in western China, drops in sea level, and anoxic events in the world's oceans. Regardless of its causes, the Capitanian extinction proved to be the fifth worst in history in terms of ecological damage, with the previously widespread and successful dinocephalians dying out, and the Anomodonts seeing their diversity cut in half. Survivors tended to be smaller animals that were generally between 20 and 50 kilograms in weight and were capable of burrowing. In the aftermath, the saber-toothed Gorgonopsians would step out of the shadows to assume the mantle of terrestrial apex predators, replacing the bulkier and more basal carnivorous dinocephalians. Originating as small and marginal predators during the Middle Permian, the Gorgonopsians were noticeably more mammal-like in appearance than the vaguely reptilian-looking synapsids of the earlier period, while also retaining a number of archaic traits, such as parietal eyes on the tops of their heads, functioning Jakobson's organs in the roofs of their mouths, and brains that were closer in structure to those of modern reptiles than mammals. As a whole, Gorgonopsians were quite stocky and robust animals, with large skulls equipped with often greatly enlarged upper canines and strong gripping incisors. The post-canine teeth tended to be either highly reduced or even absent in some species, a trait that is quite strikingly different from the carnivorous mammals of the Cenozoic, which rely on shearing carnassial teeth in order to slice and tear through flesh. With this in mind, it has been suggested that these animals were ambush predators that utilised their powerful jaws, sharp canines and wide gapes to bite through the soft flanks of large, slow-moving prey items such as dicynodonts. After delivering a deep, puncturing strike, the Gorgonopsid would then retreat and back away, leaving their unfortunate target to weaken due to blood loss and shock. The predator would then return to dispatch the stricken herbivore, pulling off ragged chunks of meat and swallowing them with very little in the way of chewing. In fact, these animals lacked a secondary palate in the roof of the mouth, which would have made it very difficult to breathe and chew at the same time. This feature first appears in Thoracophalians and Cynodonts during the Middle Permian, and is a hallmark of modern mammal anatomy. Although Gorgonopsians were not especially fast runners, their semi-erect stances and strong limbs were more than enough to outpace the many squat and bulky herbivores with which they shared their environment. Earlier synapsids tended to possess postures that were closer to sprawling, with this being a byproduct of having long heavy tails and digits of greatly varying length. Gorgonopsians, on the other hand, had more evenly sized digits and notably shortened tails that were held off the ground which probably enabled them to develop a more upright posture. It is currently unknown as to whether these animals possessed any sort of hairy coat or sweat glands in the skin like mammals, although it is certainly possible that some kind of simple hair or even whiskers may have been present. Although becoming larger apex predators, Gorgonopsians started out as small and gracile carnivores. This is true of the most basal members of the clade, with the ferret-sized genus Nochnitsa being a good example. Found in late Permian age deposits near Kirov in western Russia, this modestly sized and rare animal possessed relatively small and thin upper canines, suggesting that it fed on lighter and less well-armoured prey such as smaller sauropsids and dicynodonts. The relatively similar genus Vyatko Gorgon is known from the same site, being represented by surprisingly complete remains that have given many valuable insights into Gorgonopsian anatomy. About the size of a small dog, Vyatko Gorgon possessed gastralia, much like those present in non-avian dinosaurs, large sclerotic rings that indicate nocturnal habits, and recurved serrated teeth. While its brain was relatively smaller than those of mammals, and the sideways placed eyes provided limited stereoscopic vision, the genus had well-developed turbinals in the nasal cavity, 
a feature associated with an advanced sense of smell, which would have helped them to track prey and carrion. The canine's sabre teeth were used for delivering the slashing killer bite, while the incisors, which formed an arch in front of the sabre teeth, held the prey and cut flesh while feeding. To allow them to increase their gape when biting, Gorgonopsians had several bones in their mandibles that could move in relation to each other and had a double articulation with the skull. Unlike in mammals, where the rear joint articular bone has become the malleus of the ear, in life, Vietko Gorgon would have hunted the small 30 cm long parareptile Emerolita, as well as the abundant pig sized pariasaur Delta Vachtia. According to a recent phylogenetic analysis carried out by Camera and Rubidge in 2022, all more derived Gorgonopsians can be placed into either a Russian clade or an African clade. The former contains only four genera and are mostly native to Western Russia. This includes the medium-sized genus Sauroctonus and the wolverine-sized Pravoslavlevia, which is a close relative of the largest known Gorgonopsian so far known, Inostransivia. This massive animal was native to the late Permian of European Russia and South Africa, being characterised by a robust build, broad skull and highly derived dentition. The genus measured up to 3.5 metres or 11 feet long and weighed in at 660 pounds, being comparable to a grizzly bear in terms of size. Like a bear, it stood on five-toed plantigrade feet and would have been a fast runner over short distances easily capable of ambushing large pariasaurs and dicynodonts. Once the predator caught up to these prey items, the strong forelimbs and surprisingly dexterous digits would have been used to restrain the animal while securing the killer bite. Inostransibia possessed very large, elongated canines, and jaws that were capable of opening at a very wide angle of 90 degrees, stressing the ability to inflict deep, puncturing wounds. Dwelling in a variety of environments, ranging from cold deserts to semi-arid floodplains, Inostransivia was clearly a successful genus, persisting for about 8 million years and producing three species. However, its hunting prowess would not save it from the end Permian extinction event, when drastic environmental changes would lead to its size becoming a handicap. The so-called African clade was more diverse. One of the most basal of these was the newly described genus Phorsis, from the Middle Permian of South Africa. One of the oldest Gorgonopsians so far known, this animal was surprisingly large when compared to other basal members of the clade, with the holotype represented by partial cranial material that indicates a skull length of 30 centimetres or 12 inches. This complicates the previous narrative that suggested that Gorgonopsians only developed larger sizes during the late Permian after the extinction of the Dinocephalians. The slightly more derived Gorgonops was also a relatively large animal, measuring up to 2 metres long and weighing up to 230 pounds, being comparable to an Asiatic black bear in terms of size. The prominent sabre teeth would have had no problem in penetrating the toughened hides of its pariasaur and dicyodont prey. It is worth noting here that paleo art depictions of Gorgonopsians tend to show these animals in a very shrink wrapped way, with little fat or muscle, and skin that clings tightly to the skeleton in an unrealistic manner. Thankfully, some current paleo artists are now showing these predators with greater and more realistic levels of body fat and muscle. A good example would be this piece, showing off the sabre tooth genus Smilosaurus by the wonderful Nyx. When shown in this way, Gorgonopsians start to resemble hippo bears, which makes sense for robust plantigrade predators built for power and not for speed. The most derived members of the African clade are the Rubigenae, which are all endemic to Africa. These were among the largest Gorgonopsians known, and the largest known from the African continent. Their massive canines and serrated teeth indicate they were adapted for macro predation. The robust skull roof and superorbital bosses of these animals likely acted to protect the skull from the stresses inflicted during prey capture, and similar morphology has been seen in many other macro predators in the fossil record, including theropod dinosaurs. The genus Dinogorgon was quite typical, being known from late Permian deposits in South Africa and Tanzania, about the size of a large wolf, had greatly reduced post-canine teeth and would have relied on its strong incisors to rip the flesh from its prey, which would then be swallowed whole. In the related genus Clelandia, the post-canine teeth are completely absent, being replaced by a ridge of bone at the rear of the jaws. 
Its skull was highly rugose and covered in bosses, which has been interpreted as an adaptation to handling the stresses placed upon the animal when biting struggling prey. However, the most massive member of this clade was Rubidia itself, which was also known from the late Permian of Southern Africa. This bulky predator can be considered the African endemic counterpart to Innostransevia, as it was only slightly smaller than the latter, being about the size of an American black bear. Its massive thickened skull measures up to 46 centimeters or 1.5 feet long, while its teeth were deeply rooted and clearly adapted for grabbing and puncturing through both skin and muscle. Despite the very powerful build of the genus, Rubigia and relatives would not have been capable of biting through bone, unlike the earlier Anteosaurids. It is also currently uncertain if this genus, as well as other Gorgonopsians, were endothermic or not, with it currently being suggested that large forms are probably inertial homeotherms, with faster metabolisms than modern lizards and snakes, but slower than in mammals and birds. This contrasts with the more derived Thoracophalians and Cynodonts, which were probably at least somewhat endothermic. Despite their success as the dominant predators of the late Permian, the Gorgonopsians would perish alongside many other animal groups during the end Permian mass extinction, which was caused primarily by volcanism which formed the Siberian traps. The resultant massive spike in greenhouse gases caused rapid aridification due to both temperature spikes, being as much as 8 to 10 degrees at the equator, acid rain, frequent wildfires, and potential breakdown of the ozone layer. Among therapsids, small therasophalians and large herbivorous anomodonts managed to cross the Permian-Triassic boundary, and survived respectively until the Middle and Upper Triassic. But only small-bodied species of cynodont survived into the Jurassic, whose descendants would include the mammals. The niches left open by the Gorgonopsians were eventually filled by the archosaurs during the early stages of the Triassic, with the once dominant synapsids generally being pushed into the background during the Mesozoic. Thanks for watching everyone! The next episode will be covering the evolutionary history of the dome-headed Pachycephalosaurs, which have a surprisingly poor early fossil record when compared to their Ceratopsian cousins. See you again soon. Cheerio!